In this video, we will look at some examples of heat recovery in buildings. First, let's go back to the heat losses of in a building. They consist of transmission losses and ventilation losses. On top of that, the heat from the domestic hot water, like the uh, water from the shower, goes literally down the drain. Isn't it possible to recover these heat losses? First, let's look at the transmission losses. There is a way to recover heat transmission losses, and this has actually been done in the pret de house by adding a greenhouse. Without the greenhouse, the transmitted heat dissolves in the outdoor environment. With the greenhouse, the transmission losses are captured in the greenhouse, which as a result gets slightly warmer than the outdoor air. When the air from the greenhouse is used as incoming air for the ventilation, a part of the transmission losses will be regained and reused. So yes, transmission losses can be regained, for example by adding a greenhouse, but the actual amount of transmitted heat that can be regained is quite small. But the main reason to add a greenhouse is to benefit from the passive solar heat gains. As soon as the sun starts shining, the greenhouse gets heated up, and in winter this reduces the heat losses. But in summer and in the intermediate season, it soon becomes too warm, and the windows and roof fans must be opened to release the heat. It is possible to capture this heat and reuse it, instead of just releasing it. For this, you need a heat exchanger. In the pret de house, a heat exchanger is installed in the top of the greenhouse. This heat exchanger takes the heat from the air, so it can be also be called a heat collector. After the heat is collected, it is transferred to the heating system. What is a heat exchanger and how does it work? This scheme illustrates the general principle of a heat exchanger. Heat is transferred from one fluid, a liquid like water or a gas like air, to another fluid, without the two fluids being in direct contact. The warm fluid cools down, while the colder fluid warms up. To facilitate a good heat exchange, the contact surface is increased as much as possible. There are several different types of heat exchangers used in buildings. Actually, a convector or radiator for heating is also a heat exchanger. In this case, a water to air heat exchanger. And here you can see how the heat exchange surface is increased by using convector fins. The heat exchanger in the pret de greenhouse is an air-to-water heat exchanger. Here an additional heat pump is needed to boost the temperature to a useful temperature for heating and showering. In one of the next lectures the principle of heat pumps will be explained. Now let's look at the recovery of ventilation losses. It's fairly easy to recover the heat from the exhaust ventilation air when there is a mechanical ventilation system with both mechanical air inlet and outlet. As you can see here, in the pret de house, a mechanical ventilation box is installed. It has four connections. Fresh air coming in, warm waste air coming from the house, preheated fresh air supplied to the rooms, cool down waste air blown out. Inside this box is an air-to-air -air heat exchanger, where the cold incoming air is preheated by the warm exhaust air. The heat exchanger consists of parallel aluminum plates, creating dozens of small parallel air ducts, alternately for the incoming and outgoing airflow. The total heat exchange surface between the incoming and outgoing airflows is several square meters. This heat recovery unit with a counterflow heat exchanger has a heat exchange efficiency of more than 90%. So for example, when the outdoor temperature is 0 degrees and the indoor temperature 20 degrees, the heat exchanger will preheat the indoor air to 18 degrees and the exhaust air will be cooled down to 2 degrees. As a result, the ventilation heat losses will also be decreased by 90%. I'll now show you how waste heat from domestic hot water can be recovered. 
Normally, the heat that is contained in the wastewater, coming from the shower, the kitchen sink, the washing machine and the dishwasher, just gets lost in the sewer system. In this animation you can see the principle of a shower heat recovery, where the cold fresh water is preheated by the warm wastewater from the shower, using a vertical double walled pipe. The preheated cold water is connected to the cold water inlet of the mixer tap in the shower. With this system, the heat loss while showering can be reduced with 50% or more. This shower heat recovery can be easily installed if the shower is on the first floor. There are also systems where the heat recovery is embedded in the shower tray, as you can see here. The heat recovery only works when the inlet and flushing of warm water is at the same time. With a system like this, you can't regain the heat from, for instance, a bathtub or a washing machine. Finally, I'll show you a completely different way to exchange heat, ground duct ventilation. Here the incoming air for the ventilation system is led through a duct that is buried underground at the depth of 1 to 2 meters. The ventilation air is preheated or precooled to the ground temperature before it enters the building. Depending on the ground temperature at your location, this can help to reduce the heating demand in winter or the cooling demand in summer. With the program Climate Consultant, you can find the temperature fluctuation in the ground at a depth of 0.5, 2 and 5 meters. Here, for instance, the graph for the Netherlands. A ground duct is able to warm up the incoming outdoor air to around 5 to 10 degrees in winter. And in summer, the incoming air can be cooled down to around 15 degrees, even when the outer temperature, temperature is 25 degrees. And here you can see an example of a project for a school, where several parallel ground ducts with a total length of more than 100 meters are buried at a depth of 2 meters. It's obvious that this ground duct technology is not feasible everywhere. First, the underground must be suitable to bury the ducts and there must be enough space to provide enough length for the ducts. Furthermore, the climate must be suitable. In a moderate climate with cold winters and warm summers, it's most effective. It also works in climates with a big temperature difference between day and night. But in a tropical climate, with a high average outer temperature, it's not effective, because the temperature difference between the air and the soil is too small. To summarize, in this lecture you've seen different ways to regain and reuse heat in buildings. Depending on your local climate, one or more of these technologies might be applicable in the zero energy design of your building.